I stopped telling myself I was smart and I started telling myself that I was a learner, that I was willing to put in that time and that energy to learn. And that changed everything in my life. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. Number one problem in the world today is people say, I'm gonna delay my happiness until a future time. Once I get that relationship, then I'll let myself be happy. Once I have the house, then I'll be happy. Once I have the car, then I'll be happy. Once I have the promotion, I'll be happy. Once I have a certain amount of money, then I'll be happy. You need to think in optimistic terms. You need to believe that things are possible because then you'll actually put in the energy to find that solution. I think that there is a gigantic, gigantic chasm between arrogance and confidence. I have been arrogant in my life, there's no question, and I have a deep-seated confidence, and they come from very different places, and it looks like this. My confidence comes from knowing that when I say I'm gonna do something, I do it, that I'm willing to learn and put in the work, that I can figure something out, okay? That's where my confidence comes from. My arrogance is often born out of thinking that makes me cool. That's where the trouble begins. When you think that thing that you're good at makes you better than someone else, that becomes arrogance. When you think people should um, stop and sit at your feet because you know so damn much and you're a master, that's arrogance. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, as soon as I get my divorce, all kinds, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can where you are with what you have and never be satisfied a lot of people never take a chance in life they don't want to take any chances they want the situation to be ideal see that's not walking by faith that's walking by sight if i can see it i'll do it no 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 that's a lot of people say if i can see it i'll believe it no 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 if you believe it you can see it and don't be disturbed because no one else can see it that's not unusual. That is ordinary. When, on the other hand, you're confident and you want to serve and you want to help and you want to build and build something that is amazing because you've got the power to build it. That is awesome. And the confidence to march forth and build that thing is intoxicating. It's powerful. But because you want to build something, you actually want it to do what it's meant to do. Suddenly, there is no arrogance because you just want to know what's really going to build this thing, what's actually going to make it work. You're building this thing, not just because it's a cool expression of what you're capable of. You're building it because you want to do something that helps other people. And the act of building itself is insanely pleasurable. When you focus on those two things, there is no room for arrogance because you're thinking about the people that you want to help. And therefore, the thing that you're building actually has to work. So being an expression of you being badass or being an expression of you being cool none of that matters what matters is you actually want the thing that you're building to work but because you want some different kind of results in your life you've got to be willing to be unreasonable if you want unreasonable results in your life you've got to be willing to be unreasonable part of being unreasonable you don't judge according to appearances Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. Most people won't do that. Most people say, call me when you get it together. Then I'll support you. The other thing is that one of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. The problem is you have to bring you to all those places. And people think if I lose, if I let myself enjoy my life right now, I might lose my edge. The athletes I coach think that all the time. Nothing can be further from the truth. In fact, if you don't enjoy the victories as you go, your brain doesn't produce any dopamine, and you actually lose the desire to continue to perform. There's a direct correlation between celebrating your wins and wanting to do more of them. See, when I was broke, and I was broke longer than I've been rich. You know what I'd always do when I walk into a store? I'd never get what I wanted. I'd always check the price tag. What's it cost? What's it cost? What's it cost? What's it cost? And when you're always looking at what it costs, you never get what you want. And a lot of us do that in our lives. Every day we're repeating ourselves, what's this costing me? The sacrifice I'm going, I don't know if I can go anymore. And you lose what you want.
you want. Paul, you worked out today? How many hours you work out? Three hours. He on vacation three hours, y'all! Y'all gotta hold people accountable. Who you running with? Don't let these dudes come in here and think they won because they made it to the league. You ain't won nothing yet. You just got here. You ain't won nothing yet. Everybody here, separate yourself. You can't let these dudes come in and just think they can have work, have work out, and you, it, it's gonna show on game day. Hold them accountable. Be a leader. Show by example. The reason why I talk with so much passion because I live everything I'm talking about. You don't never hear me talk about working out because I don't work out. I don't be on no, get up and bench press. I don't be talking about no bench pressing. I don't bench press. I'd be lucky if I do 500 push-ups in a year. I don't be telling nobody be on no diet. I ain't on one. I don't talk about that kind of stuff. Why? Because I don't do it. But getting up at three o'clock, I talk about it. Getting them degrees, I talk about it. Being the best in your industry, I talk about it. I go pound to pound with any other motivational speaker. I talk about it. I ate it pound for pound. I didn't say I was the best. You got to quit negotiating the price. Right now, make the decision that any price is worth it as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral for you to make your family proud of you, for you to make your dream happen. Stop negotiating the price. This negotiation you keep doing in your mind, is this really where I'm supposed to be? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Steals all your energy. It steals your focus. But those of you that get laser focused, become totally immersed in your dream, that know those babies of yours, your parents, guess what? They're worth the sacrifice. Probably when you were a little one, I got three minutes, guys. Probably when you were a little boy or a little girl, here's what I'll bet. There was somebody in your life at some point, I pray, that made you feel special. Maybe one, maybe they've even passed away. Maybe it was a grandma or a grandpa or a parent has got chills. Or a coach or somebody that just, they made you feel special. Mine was my papa. I'm named after him, Edward III. We'd ride in his van on Sundays to go get donuts. I'd sit there and he'd just look at me and say, Eddie, you're special. And they look at him and say, I am Papa. He goes, you're, just, you're my favorite grandson. He had 15 grandkids. He'd always tell me, you're my favorite. He probably told all of them. But you're not going to outwork me. My grandma called and said, grandson, you all over the world. When are you going to get some rest? I said, when I die, grandma. My ancestors 400 years ago, they didn't have this opportunity. They couldn't come to speak. Listen to me very closely. My ancestors didn't have this. And I ain't talking about slavery. I'm talking about Dr. Martin Luther King. He run circles around me, but he wasn't born when you can make 75 grand to 100 grand speaking. Martin Luther King would run circles around me. He had his PhD at 26. I got mine in my 40s. He's the best of the best. If Martin Luther King was alive right now, all his stuff would go viral. But guess what? You, that speech, I have a dream, Imagine that joker being on Instagram. Imagine him TikToking that joker. Problem is though, he was born in the 60s. There are opportunities I have he didn't have. You think I'm gonna waste those? So I need y'all to do me a favor. Number one, set the standard on three, one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Your standard, I'm not telling you what standard to set. I'm telling you this, if you smoking and drinking, you better be the best in the league. If you smoking and drinking during the week and you ain't, <laughs> and you ain't the best in your position, you might, need, you might wanna stop. But he, I get chills right now. He made me feel special. Can you remember that person in your life and how they made you feel when you were a little boy or a little girl? You just felt something with them, didn't you? You just, man, I was born for a reason. I'm special. I'm supposed to be somebody. I'm supposed to make a difference in my life. Let me tell you something. Whoever that person was, if you were blessed to have them, listen, they were right about you. And maybe over the time of your life and your childhood and grade school and you get into the world and business doesn't work and a relationship and you forget. But I'm here to remind you tonight they were right. And what you're really after is that feeling. What you're really after is the way they made you feel is living up to it. Because at the end of our lives, I don't know whether or not you're going to live, but I know for sure you're going to die. And I don't know whether or not you're gonna live before you die. Most of us are not living because we're so worried about what everybody thinks about us. 